Uktaran, come to talk to you Aristos, I'm going to take this one. 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 Current honor, some of the lives in the Nuts, can on Gradam Shah, Gradam and Uktaran, a Glaka, August, time on a Buyak, Lesh and Uktaran, August on Common, as an honor shot. Um, August week is fresh and top weeks like all this on Orihor uh, on Gradam uh, PWC August Orihor no Gradam Galera not on Grupa Chanan Gormal Mila Malvi. Presidents of Galway Chamber, uh, Minister Chakti Dalla, uh, Deputy Mayor, Alex officials. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends. I'm delighted to be here this evening to accept this President's Award from the Galway Chamber. And um, I'd just like to thank, uh, first of all, again, the President, the Chamber, and also the sponsor for tonight's award, PwC. And I'd also like to say thanks to the overall sponsor for tonight's awards, um, Shannon Group, home from my favorite airport. Thank you, <laughs> Mary and team. Uh, I'd also like to thank my family. Um, as Durbin mentioned, actually that um, photograph is, uh, you know, it's, it's quite touching for me because it's actually um, the lighthouse in North Clare where I'm from. So my grandfather was the lighthouse keeper. In fact, the story is that about 70 years ago, the transatlantic boats coming over from uh, the States to Galway requested that a lighthouse be built in North Clare, where I'm from, and uh, they petitioned the Port of Galway, the Galway Harbour Commissioners and the Irish Light Commissioners, and they asked if they could build a lighthouse. And my great-grandfather actually owns the patch of land in Blackhead in North Clare where they built the lighthouse, and he sold it to them for, I think, the princely sum of five pounds. And uh, my grandfather was then the first lighthouse keeper and built the lighthouse with the uh, commissioners at the time. So thanks again for the, the lovely picture. Um, so I want to say thanks to my family, and I'd also like to thank the uh, various organizations I'm involved with in relation to this award. NUI Galway, who have supported me as an employee to basically build bridges with the startup community and within the startup community. Um, Westpic, where our mission is getting startups investor ready, and uh, I'm delighted to ser serve as vice chair and the incoming chair for Westpic. And finally, the Galway City Innovation District, whose Porsche team have shone a light on what can be achieved for startups in downtown Galway. And I've no doubt that building number two will be a beacon for scale ups in Galway and in the west of Ireland. Um, since the theme of tonight's event is the Western Edge, I had to say that did you know the word entrepreneur is invented by an Irishman? In fact, a man from the wild Atlantic way. So how many, how many people knew that entrepreneur was an Irish thing? Hands up. Okay, so something to be proud of and to celebrate. So Richard Cantillon was a Kerry man who wrote a book in 1730 called An Essay on the General Nature of Trade and Commerce. And in that book, which is nearly 300 years ago, he defined entrepreneur for the first time. So you'll often hear entrepreneur is a French word and so on. Well, it is a French word because it's from the French word entreprendre, but uh, Cantillon, who was born in Kerry, uh, used it in its business sense for the first time nearly 300 years ago. Um, I just want to tell two kind of short stories before I go and uh, let you on to, to proceedings. And one of them happened to me last week, last Friday. So in my video there, I talked about the need for more entrepreneurs in the pipeline, getting more people into the system. We have, as I said, um, we're lagging a little bit behind in terms of new startup creation in Galway. So obviously getting people enthusiastic, getting them spirited about being an entrepreneur is an important thing to do. Uh, so I had a, a student who sent me an email last week asking if we could meet. Uh, one of my first year engineering students. So, you know, I didn't know him apart from having taught him in a class with 280 other students, but he dropped me an email and said, could he meet to talk about a startup idea? And uh, he offered me a coffee and I said, I don't drink coffee afternoon after 12 o'clock, too late for me. Um, so anyway, he, he came along to my office and he talked about his startup idea, which was basically around the idea of electronic receipts. So, you know, that you pay for stuff on your mobile phone. You still sometimes get paper receipts. His solution was to try and reduce the amount of paper waste, but also try and make the whole process more efficient. 
And we had a great chat about customers. You know, he was talking about this being a service for students, for people in his own age group. Um, and I talked about you know, maybe moving a little bit to corporate or enterprise customers might be a better, better opportunity to sell. Um, we talked about um, integrating some kind of more advanced technology like blockchain into the system to make it more innovative and allowing you to trace the receipt from end to end and have a kind of secure transaction there. And then we talked about pitching, because pitching is very important for startups. You have to be able to communicate your idea. Talking about a startup in 10 minutes, the ideal set of slides you have, and then we talked about the Callus Law, which is named after Maria Callus. How you enter and leave the room is the most important. Okay. So anyway, um, I was really inspired by this young guy. He just had this real entrepreneurial drive. He's a great example of types of entrepreneurs that we should be cultivate, cultivating and supporting and giving skills to, and, to, and also space and money and all the other stuff as well. Um, so uh, you know, there's, there's a great future ahead for, for, for entrepreneurs like that. It's not for the older 26-year-olds like me. Um, it's, but. No, young or old, it doesn't matter. You can be entrepreneurial at, at any age. And we, we need to have more role models, basically, getting people in choose about the um, spirit of entrepreneurship. Anyway, that, that young guy, and his, he had a teammate from UL, they went off to pitch their idea in uh, the Fidelity University competition on Tuesday, and they won. So we have great people, just need to, again, as I say, cultivate and, and uh, support them. Um, the last thing I want to say is that Galway is the best city in Ireland to start a business. Hey! No, that wasn't good enough. We have to have a louder next time, okay? Galway is the best city in Ireland to start a business. Yeah. Hey! That was better. Now, it's not just me saying that. So there was actually a report published two weeks ago from the World Bank, and the World Bank uh, wrote a report called Doing Business in the European Union 2020. And Ireland was one of the, um, the countries they focused on. And within Ireland, Galway came out uh, on tops in terms of efficiency for doing business. So there are areas for improvement. If you read the report, there's things we can definitely improve on. And we really just need to come together, as Dave mentioned, um, as stakeholders, to make sure we cement our position as a great place in Ireland to start or scale a company. Thank you, everyone, and have a good night.